In the previous episode, funding was authorized to build Superior State University Nicolay Bay, and construction began soon thereafter on a small university, which has since become a renowned institution. But the governor and legislature's goal was always to have the university become one of the premier institutions of the upper Midwest. And to that end, funding was set aside for more university buildings, including an engineering building, a school of tourism, a bookstore, a library, two sports stadiums, and many other buildings, parks, and monuments. In today's episode, we're going to continue building the university expansion, building until we have a prestigious five-star campus. We'll also add a bit of housing right about here and make some much needed transportation improvements. And we'll make a couple of changes based on your feedback, so make sure you stick around to the end of the episode. And if you usually max out your universities, hit the like button, or if you like to keep them smaller, hit the like button for that too, and let me know what you usually do in the comments. Or drop your favorite emoji for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the town of Nicolay in Nicolay Bay, and we've got a good one today. We're going to be taking our quaint little university campus and leveling it up into a prestigious five-star institution. So to do that, let's go over today's plan. And for as much as we built in the last episode, we're going to be building a ton today. We're going to start off by adding some of the level three buildings that we unlocked at the end of the last episode, the College of Tourism, a library, and a few other buildings. Once we place those, we're going to do our best to make sure that we're meeting the requirements to level up to level four. Once we have met those requirements, we're going to switch gears, build a bit of residential right here, including our Greek row, and add some sports stadiums right about here. At that point, I'm hoping that we'll have our level four buildings unlocked and we can begin to add those to the campus. And while we're waiting for the campus to level to level five, we'll make a couple of transportation improvements. Upon reaching level five, we'll add those buildings. And really, it's the College of Engineering, and I'm hoping we can add that back here, but we'll have to see. And I'm really excited for this one, so let's get started adding our level three buildings. Let's begin by taking a look at the buildings that we've unlocked. The Trade School Library, the IT Club, the Trade School Commencement Office, the Trade School Academic Statue, and the School of Tourism and Travel. We are where we need to be in terms of our student population, but we have about half of the attractiveness and we're missing a few academic works. So to get to where we need to be, I think we're gonna start out by adding a couple of staff members, which will help improve our chances of creating an academic work. I'm also gonna give a research grant. So this is a temporary thing. I can't forget this because we will bleed ourselves dry in terms of our finances. The first building I want to place is actually the Trade School Commencement Office. I've been eyeing a location for this, and I think it's basically perfect. I'm going to temporarily place this right here, and then I'm going to go and turn on Anarchy and use the Move It mod to rotate this around. I think it would be really amazing to have this face Marquette Island. Now, a couple of reasons why I have it facing this way. As you walk up for your commencement, you would be looking out into the bay once we remove all these trees. See, just like that. <laughs> and the view would be absolutely amazing. We'll control H this down and then steal this road and we will pull this right on through. And then because of what this is, we're gonna add a bit of parking back here, but I do think that we will add some transit later on in the episode and hopefully get most of the people in this area using transit. And there we go, that is wonderful. The one strange thing about this asset is that there are trees on one side and not on the other. I think I'm gonna be okay with it, but it's just kind of one of those weird things that I'm noticing. Just kidding, I'm not okay with it. It was overlapping the parking lot a bit and it looked a bit strange. Next up, I'm gonna add an IT club, or rather, I might add a few IT clubs. There's something I really love about this asset. It's really bland looking. <laughs> so what that means for us is that we can basically place this anywhere we want without worrying about it being too outlandish or offensive looking. So I, I mentioned that specifically because there's a beach volleyball club that is basically only a beach volleyball club. That's all it can be. That's all it will ever be. But this one, you can't tell if it's an IT club or Maybe it's the place where the professors go and hang out. I have no idea, <laughs> but it looks pretty nice. And it's worth quite a bit in terms of getting us to where we need to be from a campus attractiveness standpoint. And then I want to call a little bit of a mulligan. 
I feel bad about what I've done here at the start of the university, uh, the, the main university building. I'm kind of hiding it back here. And that's not what happens with these buildings. If anything, they're showpieces. With that in mind, we are going to clear this. We're likely going to move some of these apartments and make this a bit more of a grand uh, showpiece of the university. And where we're going to start that is with one of our trade school fountains. And I'll control H that to the building over here. And we will fix all of the grading over here in a while. But for the time being, this will do the trick. Now, I think that with what we've done, <laughs> we're so close, but we're not quite there. But I'm noticing one error that I made in the previous episode that we've got to fix. I have these normal pedestrian paths teeing into our university paths and they look terrible. So we're going to upgrade these. And one of the reasons I'm doing that is I want to use a couple of these academic statues. I'll place one right here and then I'm actually going to copy it. And the reason I'm copying it is now it is completely straight with this. And I'm going to hold down alt and then rotate it around and then place it. And now when I use move it, they're perfectly aligned with one another and I can make it feel like one larger park by just moving this around a bit. There we go. I just love that. I think that looks really nice. And this will get us to where we need to be with our campus attractiveness. But we would have gotten there anyway because we've got a couple more buildings to place. And the most important building of them all is the School of Tourism and Travel. So we're going to place that right here. And that is going to look like a strange place for this. And if I were to leave it like this, it would be. So we've got to spin this around. And normally this would be really challenging. But because we have move it in the game, it's very simple. So there are two different ways that we can rotate this. We can either do this or we could spin it like this. Now, this honestly wouldn't be my first option, but for one thing. I like the idea of being able to have paths running through this entire area and having a little node of activity right here. And what I mean by that is we are going to pull this building right about here. We'll delete these paths. We're going to add a path right through this building and all the way through it. In fact, I'm going to turn on the road guidelines and try to line these two up. And then I'll run one more right here. So now I'm using the marquee selection tool in move it and I have buildings deselected because now I can pull this path right up to where I want it to be and make it feel like this path is part of this building. And look at that. We've got a nice curve through there. You might really feel like me though and, and really despise all of these joints that are occurring. They're actually pretty easy to fix if you have node controller. So control N into node controller, change this to a bend and it'll get rid of the little lines that you see there and make it a continuous path like that. I like that a ton more. I'm also noticing that we've got this building here. I believe it's our gymnasium. Yeah. And there is a potential path connection right here. I don't want to actually make this connection. I just want it to look like it. So I'm using move it to just drag this in. And now at least it looks a little bit better, but we're not finished here. If we're going to add this building, we're going to make this feel like a special place. And using that same trick that we just did, I think we're going to add in a little path right through here. Oh, we have our academic year report and we have reached a claim. This is amazing. So our attractiveness went up 500, which is plenty. Our student body is exactly where it needs to be. And we have enough academic works. So before I talk about the last building, I do want to see what we need to reach level five. Ooh, we need a lot of academic works. We need a ton of attractiveness and our students, we just need to maintain them. All that said, let's place our last level three building and it's the trade school library. I want to really follow the contours and let the contours be the guide for where this goes. And that's going to bring this building in conflict with our outdoor study. We're going to take this and relocate this way over here. I love this location for this particular asset because I think that there needs to be more of a university presence over by these dorms. Remember, these are the graduate dorms and they are supposed to feel a bit disconnected, a bit more private, maybe a bit quieter, but at the same time, they, it still needs university amenities. And I think this would be an excellent one. Now we'll come back over here and finish up with our library. And the idea here 
is going to be that this basically we have enough room for a library and a building next to it and we create a unique shape for a new park i think it looks pretty good in this location we'll have to decorate this and make this a more useful park in the future but for the time being i think that we're in a good place so let's move on to creating greek row we're going to be building our fraternity row right about here and this is an ideal location for a number of reasons first of all we look at our contours it's basically flat as a pancake so we don't even really have to do any grading to get a road back here so i think we'll extend this road up here and have it loop around back here and connect up by the hotels but that's not the main reason really it's the sports stadiums those are going to be right here. They'd be able to rent out the parking at the fraternity houses to anyone visiting the stadiums. They'd also have easy access to the underclassmen for recruitment efforts. They'd have very close access to all of our university buildings that they would be attending. And they would have easy access to even some of the buildings on the other side of campus and the downtown area. So just overall, it's a great location. So to begin, I'm going to add a road right about here. Let's use move it right away and pull these over here. And I'm gonna back these out as far as I can. There would just be a lot of people living there. So you might see two people per bedroom. The parking requirements would be higher as a result. Now that we have that in place, we are gonna add a few more houses over here. So I will once again hit show extra filters panel, and then I will search by asset creator and find King Leno. And then if we filter this down to low density residential, we get all of our college housing. I'm gonna load this up along here. There we go. I just wanted to make sure that we were going with some of our more modest buildings. And then I left this right of way right here, just in case we wanted to make a connection in the future using a path or something of that nature. Oftentimes you will see those sorts of reservations. You might not know why they're happening, but that is indeed why they are happening. Now we're going to add our fraternity and sorority houses right here. And I want to choose some buildings that look like they would be appropriate. So I'm thinking buildings like this. And there we go. Simple as that. I feel like these buildings are basically the quintessential fraternity and sorority houses. Even right here, you've got some of the Greek architecture, the columns in there. Uh, the one thing that's a little bit off is the pool, but we can let a couple of things slide there. We are going to modify this street, though. I do think that we need to allow parking. That would likely be something that would be a consideration. And I'm going to leave some of this other area open. I've got a couple of ideas, but I think that we should place our sports stadiums first. Boy, oh boy, are we bleeding money, which is going to make this part of the build interesting. <laughs> because we need to have money for this. We're gonna put some of our athletic facilities in this area right here. Now, if you were to try to use some of the athletic facilities that come with the campus, you'd see that they're massive. You could fit maybe one. And reasonably, this is not going to be a school that has a huge focus on athletics. So as a result, we are going to use some of the sports venues stadiums. I was really hoping that if I were to grab one of these unique stadiums, they would turn into campus stadiums. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Either way, though, we're going to go with it because the size is just so much better. So we'll go with a medium soccer stadium, and I'm going to place that right about here. And we're going to go for this medium American football stadium. And I love this one. It just feels super unique, and it's going to fit so nicely in this area. And just look at that. It feels like it was tailor made for this area. Oh, that is beautiful. I mean, let's just be honest. I don't know that we can do any better than this. These fit perfectly. So we're going to go with these, even though when we click on them, it says Nicolay Bay versus Rock Valley. We're just going to roll with it. We're going to crank the ticket prices, too, because everyone's going to want to see it if it's expensive, apparently. <laughs> We might want to have another path right here as well so that you can walk between the stadiums. Otherwise, you're forced back onto the sidewalk, which is fine, but probably not ideal, especially considering I think we need to have some parking over here and we will go with a parking structure. I'm hoping I don't <laughs> create river problems, but I think that this would be a good location for this parking structure. It's far enough away from the university campus to dissuade students from driving to school but if they wanted to keep their car on campus, they could. And anyone who wants to go to a game would be able to get off the highway right here and get right into this parking structure. 
And while we're over here, I think we could do a little bit more in this area. And we need to continue to increase the attractiveness of our campus. So when we can, we should be attempting to throw in some sort of statue. This one is amazing. It fits basically everywhere. The only thing I don't love about it is the built-in trees. But I think we'll just roll with it and be okay with it. Drop that into the ground. And it's not interrupting the trails too much here. I think we can forgive this, and I'm pretty pleased with how this is working. Let's smooth this out and make this look a little bit better. And to do that, we're just gonna make sure that we do not have a high brush strength. And the name of the game here is be patient. Just be patient. I do want to add a couple more athletic related facilities, and we're gonna do that right over here. And that's actually why I didn't wanna build more housing over here. We'll build a basketball court couple of small parking lots and a tennis court. And then from there, we can add a few more of these apartments. In fact, I'm even gonna use the move it mod, just control CDs, spin them around. And then I really dislike that they're all the same color. I could set those manually or I could just reset and that's the approach that I will take. That is absolutely wonderful. And now that we've got our stadiums in place, I think we should move on to adding our level four buildings. Let's begin by taking a look at the level four buildings that we unlocked. We've got the trade school auditorium, the trade school laboratories, and the trade school bookstore. We'll start out with our auditorium and I wanna look at the contours. I think we could probably fit this right here. For our laboratories, we could put those right over here. I think that this would have some synergy with our police academy. So I think that this would make some sense. We'll give it some space. We don't need to crowd these buildings. There's no point. And then for our trade school bookstore, I think we'll place that right over here along the main drag. Now I'm wondering, we placed those buildings, our campus attractiveness is still not high enough. We've got a little bit of money on our hands. Let's just go for it. So just activating that gets us very close to the attractiveness level that we need. We are going to get there by placing a whole bunch of these statues. And that statue was not worth very much. It was maybe 50. I've got another idea. We will add another one of these clubs. This is the book club, but it could be just any general club. And we can add one right about here, along with another one of our parks, our campus parks. And we'll see if that gets us there. <laughs> 1806 out of 1800, that is perfectly fine by me. We've got to make sure that all these buildings are functioning though. Kind of like this one, we are missing our water pipes. So we'll place those right underneath the road, right where they belong. There's a few other things though, like this, that I have not straightened out yet and really think that I should. Let's add some trees back here to give it that grand scale of things that we used to have. That was the whole reason we put the trees here to enclose this a bit and make it feel like a really special place. And with that, we have reached the end of our academic year. We've lost some students, we've gained a ton of attractiveness, and we got a lot of academic works, but unfortunately, that is not enough to get us to where we need to be. So again, we will give a grant, we will have every academic in the state at our institution. I don't even know if we can afford that reasonably. And now that we have that done, I think we need to take a break from the university and make a couple of transportation improvements. There's really a couple of transportation improvements that we're gonna make. The first is gonna be related to transit. I think that this area needs a ferry service and a bus service. And the main reason for that is we're gonna try to get people from around the bay to this area and from the university out to Marquette Island. I think that there is the potential that maybe there's an expansion of the university to the island, something more science-based, but we'll have to cross that bridge at a later point in time. And then the other thing is there would be significant development pressure over in this area for really some improvements. I would imagine that this would become professor housing and they wouldn't be happy with a highway running right through their little neighborhood. They would also have the resources and the know-how of how to impact their local government. So I would assume that that would be something that they would be very interested in. And we are gonna upgrade some of the roads around here as a result. But let's begin with our ferry. And we'll just go with one of these really simple ferry stops. 
we have move it we might as well we'll get it as low as we can get it without the game getting mad and i think that's probably it we're gonna do something that's probably a bad idea i'm gonna unlock this road and delete it now most of the time that breaks buildings i think that this one is gonna be okay i'm not 100 percent sure but i think if i pull this up to it yep it is happy and there we go a couple of parking spaces and uh, we've got this lined up nicely with a cul-de-sac We'll add some water and we should be good to go here. And I, this is going to be a fairly simple line. We're just going to try to meet up with some of our existing lines. Thing is, we're a long ways away. So I'll turn on angle only and we'll keep anarchy on. Now let's make our connections. Our first one will be out to Marquette Island. And it looks like it worked. So we'll just have to uh, hope for the best. The second one will be the evergreen. And again, that one looks good. And just for my own personal benefit, I've renamed all of these so they make a bit more sense. I'm going to let this run for a moment because I just want to see what our ridership looks like on these. If we're going to see any passengers lining up. In fact, even right here, do we see anybody? We've got our first passenger just waiting. And this is great. I see a ton of people starting to line up here. And I also see that we have kind of an obscene number of vehicles on all of our routes. So let's change this. We've got the highest capacity ferry probably for all of them. Actually, the, the one going out to Marquette Island from Evergreen seems to have a fair number of passengers. Maybe I should just leave it. Nicolay Island to Evergreen. There's way too many vehicles. So we'll cut this one down. I think five is probably up more than enough and then i'm guessing nicolay to marquette island is gonna have almost nobody so we'll take this down to two and increase that if we need to and that's good because we're gonna have a whole bunch of fairies coming out here an obscene number and now we'll have just two so that's much more reasonable now the next thing i want to do out here is think about bus service now reasonably i do think that you would have inner city service in this area i don't want to add a gigantic inner city bus facility so instead we will add a small compact transit shelter and then we'll just make a connection to our inner city facility in evergreen we're gonna have stops all over the place this is really about getting people from one area to another so we're not gonna worry too much about having too many stops and i was contemplating running this up this road over here but I think we need to hit the dorms. So as a result, that's the route that we'll go. There are plenty of path connections and we'll even make sure that our stop is near the path connections and maybe even add another one for the sake of our bus, which does happen. You oftentimes will see that a bus route could have significant more bang for its buck if it had a pedestrian connection and those will get added by the transit company as a result. Now, I really want there to be stops around here, but we don't have the ability to stop on the highway. So we will add those in a bit. And this is a very long, very circuitous route, but it's also a campus route and you sometimes have these. And while we're over here, we're going to upgrade this road and I'm going to upgrade this to a tree line road. Collision is off and that's exactly as I wanted. I don't want to destroy these homes, but we'll just upgrade probably to about here. We'll say that that is the extent that the university professors currently live. And there we go. We've upgraded all of these. I left the cul-de-sacs as roads that you could park on, but for the rest of them, they're tree lined and you would not be able to park. Now we can modify this bus route. And I just want to add at least one stop here. And there we go. I think that's pretty darn good. The other transportation improvements that I would see is that we're gonna have one more bus route going to our main transfer inner city facility. And I wanna add one more connection across the river. So knowing that there are now professors living over here, they will lobby to build a bridge right across here, get the university to pay for it. I could see that absolutely happening. And now that we've made this nice connection here, it makes me realize that again, I didn't use our university path over here. So we will upgrade this. That is much nicer. I like the visual continuity. It's not super important. I, I know that, but it makes me feel better. So we're, we're going to do it. And then finally, let's add this longer bus route going back and forth from here all the way over to our inner city bus facility. Try to find an open bay, place it right there, and then run it right back. 
So this route is going to have a ton of vehicles. So we're going to need to keep an eye on that. So Route 18 is the one that we just built. And this one has 11 vehicles. There's actually a couple of spots where there's a lot of queued up people. So I think we will go with a higher capacity. And it, I really hate that <laughs> to get any higher capacity than 30, really, it's either a double decker or an articulated bus. If we're gonna go for an Arctic, I'm gonna go for one with a lot of capacity and take the number of vehicles way, way down. And then let's look at number 19 as well. And this one's obscene. <laughs> There's 25 buses going back and forth. We're gonna take this down to two. And again, we'll go with another articulated bus. So two pinging back and forth, getting the students from wherever they're from on their mega bus or their badger bus or well, not badger bus here, but whatever it would be here. <laughs> and uh, they will uh, be able to ride directly to campus. And with that, I think I'm going to let this run for a while until we unlock our level five buildings. And we've finally done it. We have become a prestigious campus leveling up to level five. But this wasn't just me waiting around. It wasn't an inevitability. I actually had to do quite a bit to make this happen. So let's go over what I did. First, I had to enable a couple of policies. I have the visiting scholars policy enabled, and this gives us a bonus for our faculty, and that helps us create academic works. So that was one of the things that we've done. We also enabled universal education. This just increases the campus attractiveness, which was really important because we were on the border. I also went through and adjusted the number of academic staff to 13, and I gave a research grant, and that helped us get the two academic works that we need. So. It's been very stressful <laughs> because we have been basically teetering back and forth on the brink of bankruptcy. So we are going to set our academic staff all the way down, get rid of these policies. It will no longer be a free campus, and I apologize for that. But I want to be able to build these buildings. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's going to be a possibility. That said, we are at risk of losing our prestigious status, and these new buildings should help out considerably. There was one more thing that I had to do. I had to make sure that we had our education pipeline in line. What I mean by that is we didn't have enough capacity in our elementary schools. So we didn't have enough people going to high school. And because of that, we didn't have enough people eligible to go to our universities. So I actually had to add two elementary schools and that immediately juiced up the number of people going to our college by about 200. So definitely if you are struggling to get people to go to your university, Think about looking at your education pipeline and seeing if you have a major deficit somewhere. So we've added one elementary school right here, which is good because the village of Golden actually doesn't have an elementary school. And then we added another one right over here. I also had to add death care. So we've added that right here. That's really to serve this entire area. We never added that. So those two things seem to have resolved most of our issues with our university. So now let's place our couple of buildings. We've unlocked the School of Engineering, the Trade School Academic Statue 2, the Trade School Media Lab, the Technology Museum, and Beach Volleyball. And now that I've turned off all those policies, you can see that we are doing a lot better financially. So we should be able to place some of these buildings. I want to start out with the School of Engineering because I have an idea for this. We're going to place this back here, and this might not seem like the most obvious location for it, but there's a couple of things that I like about this. First of all, it's very, very, very prominently located within the campus. It's an important building. We are going to likely put some landscaping behind here so that it doesn't dominate and overwhelm the trade school campus. But I want this to be accessible to both the graduate dorms and the undergraduate dorms. So in my mind, this is actually a pretty solid location. And then I want to modify the paths around here. So we've got a lot of terrain changes that we need to make to make these paths work. But I like the idea of doing that because this is the College of Engineering after all, and it could be a demonstration project for the students at one point in time. So we'll give the building itself a little bit of breathing room, and then we'll gentle up the area with the paths a bit. There we go. That is looking pretty darn good. The other thing that I thought might be kind of fun is this is a school of engineering and it doesn't necessarily just mean transportation engineering or some other sort of engineering, civil engineering. There are lots of different things that could be done in this building, maybe even agricultural engineering. 
So we know that we've got a strong apple industry in the area. So I want to create kind of a small orchard over here that could be used by the students. And now along here, I'm going to add some paths. And then I want to use my marquee selection tool and uh, select all of these if possible. <laughs> I might have to do this individually. Then control C, copy these. And I just want to place a number of these. There we go. I really, really like this. We'll also add some fences around here. And honestly, this feels like the perfect nod to this being a university set in a really rural area. You might have something like this, maybe even have a barn or two, something like that. But this is good enough in my estimation. And now I want to place our trade school media lab. And I think that this is one that would probably make more sense to have kind of in the core of the campus here. We don't have a lot of space, though. So what I'm thinking we will temporarily place that right about here. And we had a number of buildings placed over here just to kind of level up and as, as buildings that we could leave behind, but maybe might not. And I think that we're going to we're gonna kind of gear towards the whole might not thing. I am going to move this book club over there temporarily. We'll see if we have another location for that. But I want the trade school media lab over here. This is basically the only large site left over here. We also unlocked this trade school academic statue too. And I'm thinking that this might be a good replacement for the one right by the entry point. It's a little bit different. And if we don't place it there, we could place it at the edges. Maybe I like that more. We'll just have a couple of these and kind of mix these in. Now, I am curious. We have some bob work to do. And maybe we can actually replace these tiles. So I've just replaced the high tiles with tiles. Now they match, which I think is a good solution for this area. And now I can tighten these up and drop the height down to the main one. Oh, that is much better. And now we've made it feel like this is all a part of the same complex. And then finally, we also unlocked a museum. So this is one of the interesting things about this DLC is that every museum unlocks with a different university. So we've unlocked the technology museum. So we are going to place this. I want to have this be a focal point and feature of this area. So what I'm thinking is we are going to place that somewhere near the highway so that people might visit this area to see this museum and maybe get interested in the campus afterwards. So to do that, we are going to upgrade a portion of this highway. And then so we're not placing this directly on our main highway, especially since there'd be people coming off the interstate probably at a fairly rapid clip. So we will add a local road off from here. And then we'll place this facility and we're going to need to think about parking here as well. And I removed some of the trees because they were encroaching upon the road. And now that I have removed those, I should be able to add some parking or something along that line back here. The way that we'll accomplish that is to simply add a road along the side here. And there we go. I feel like that is a good solution for over here. It's a little unfortunate that this building has some of this ugly stuff behind it. So we will clear some of the landscaping so that we can see the attractive bits of this building and then use a bit of our landscaping to hide some of the less attractive bits. Because this town really is the university, we're going to have a gateway arch into this place. But you come into this area and you, you get welcome to the campus. Yeah, I just love that. That is wonderful. We do need to make sure that we've got power going over here. We don't have any right now. And the way that we are going to jump it is just to add a couple of commercial buildings along here. And we'll just add this little shopping center here. Nothing all that outlandish, but it should do the trick for us. And before we leave this, I do want to bob out some of the things that I've been talking about for a long time that I have not been bobbing out. And it's really parking at some of these buildings that are on pedestrian streets. So we're just alt being into Bob. And for most of these, we're just going to have to click on the sub buildings and look for anything that says parking and take the probability down to nothing. And I think we've got rid of most of them. It's kind of amazing how many of these buildings actually have parking stalls right up 
next to them. I had to go through most of them to remove them. Now, there is one more building that I'm realizing I forgot to place, and that is our beach volleyball club. And I absolutely want to add this, and we'll talk about why in just a moment, but we're gonna place that right about here. And now that we've placed this, let's just take a look at where our university's at. Our attractiveness is back where it should be. We don't have to juice things. We're making money with the university. We've got enough students. We're in a good place. So with all of that, I think that we need to do a bit of detailing and landscaping. The very first place I want to begin is actually right about here. We are going to create a bit of a beach. You can see that we've got some sand right here. And I brought in our new Verde Beach beach assets. And I thought it'd be really nice to have a beach right at the campus. Now, I didn't want to put it in the campus. That would be a bit weird. And I didn't want to get it too close to our ferry. So this seems like a good compromise. To do this, we're just going to level our terrain along the coast. And this seems like a good width for the beach proper. Now we are going to use our slope terrain tool and I'll go for a larger brush size. This is my top height. I'm going to right mouse click very close to the shore and then I'm going to go out quite a ways because I want this slope to be gradual and then we'll slope up to that point. We're going to need to do that in a few different locations. And then near the end, we are going to soften the terrain on the lowest brush size that we can muster. And now I will be blunt with you. I think that this is going to look like a natural part of the map because I've basically taken the same approach to building this that uh, I took to building the map, including flooding things out. <laughs> Let's let this run and clear up. There we go, finally cleared up. <laughs> so now we can add some of our beach assets and those assets are located underneath the parks and plazas menu. And I've got a whole bunch of them. This is the basic beach variety of it, but I think we're going to actually try to have uh, a little bit of parking up here, then maybe some concessions and some chairs. Okay, so I've dropped a couple of different assets down and basically I want to pull them over so that I can figure out where they line up best for us. So this right here, for instance, is right in front of our bus stop. So that wouldn't be a great spot to have these. So I'm gonna move these over here along with this other asset that we have. And then I'll take this beach that has some of these chairs and we'll move that over here. And then I just added some very basic empty beaches at the edge. This is going to generate a ton of traffic over here, but I love it. The one thing I don't love is that I added a palm tree to all of these. So we'll need to bob those out. And easy enough, looking good. Just for a little bit of cleanup because we can, I'm gonna boost this parking up and then we'll fix a little bit of the pavement marking as well. Very good, and we've already got our first few patrons using the beach. These folks apparently are sitting in the water. Good enough, enjoy your stay. <laughs> so to me, that's a very nice inclusion here. So I think it brings some life to this area. Let's get some landscaping around here as well. This is an area that I've been a bit concerned about generally. I'm going to add in a few more apartments and then we'll landscape in the middle of this. We'll start out with some of our basic landscaping. I just want to grab a piece of forest with our marquee selection tool and move it. Control C, make sure that I do not have tree anarchy on and I'm just going to plop those in between these buildings to make it feel a bit more like this was carved out of the forest because that is kind of the vision for this area. It's been carved out of the forest. There we go. And now we should do a bit of detailed work. So this is gonna be work that we have our contours on for and we try to hide some of the lumpies and bumpies. We've got a number of areas like this where there's just a little bit of ugliness that I know that with a little bit of patience we could resolve. So we're going to use some of our high vegetation here and around all these contour lines, we're going to add this basically to retain the soils in this location. And then around these to cover this up even more, I'm going to turn off the contour lines so I can get a feel for where we've got some uglies and we'll just place a couple of trees in there.
And I'm noticing that we've got some sound issues here. I tried to add a pretty thick layer of vegetation to prevent or resolve this. Doesn't seem to have done much of anything. So if that's the case, I'm just going to take it down and the students will have to go to the hospital every now and then. <laughs> Maybe that's not the height of realism, but it's going to be uh, exactly what we do. And honestly, not a ton of landscaping and detailing, but I really like what we've done here. It feels natural. It feels like this has been carved in. Before we move on, though, <laughs> we can't leave this with all the problems that we're seeing right now. So we are seeing issues with goods. We are seeing issues with garbage piling up. And I'm going to consider this part of our detailing because that is not a detail that I want to see. So I think what we're going to do is carve a little spot in over here. This is a, a major highway and we have the interstate here. So this seems like a, as good a spot as any for maybe a warehouse and some garbage collection. And hopefully that will resolve all of our issues here. And I'm actually glad that we're over here because I found this rural disaster response unit camp and I've been meaning to add it into the build. This is actually a pretty excellent location for it right next to the airport. So we're going to grab this and place this right over here and it'll be tucked away. And one of the things that I love about this is that it just it feels very rural. It feels like something that you might have in an area like this. So we are going to dense up the landscaping around here. And it's funny, this is our first disaster response unit, and as a result, it is busy. There are buildings that need to be fixed, obviously. So <laughs> good that we're over here. And then down the road, we are going to add a little warehousing space. And we'll set these both to bring in zoned commercial goods. And then we'll need to bring water and power to this location. For power, I'm just going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use this functional transformer, which generates just a little bit of power, 10 megawatts, enough for these two warehouses, or at least I would assume. Very, very good. So these should get goods into the community from out here and then hopefully load them up and distribute them to this side of Nicolay Bay because we're definitely having some problems getting goods over here. We can see that our garbage situation seems to have resolved which is an absolutely wonderful thing. And now that we've cleared everything out, I do think it's just about time that we take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour. There's one more thing that we're going to do today, and that is make a couple of fixes based on your feedback. And the first bit of feedback is coming from Ren Gray, who had two excellent suggestions. The first one was making a pedestrian road with some park amenities right along the waterfront. And the second was making a self storage. And I actually really like the idea of both of them. The self storage is something I've never really done before, so we'll see if I could pull it off. And this right here is going to be an excellent place for that pedestrian waterfront. 
So what I'm thinking we're going to do is extend this out a bit. We're not going to necessarily respect the topography entirely. And we'll get rid of that path that we placed in the previous episode. And this will be the general layout that we have for here. And now we're going to use our create parallel mode to add a key wall. So we'll select our key wall first and I'll go with this new city key. And then we will create parallel mode this. And I want to leave enough space to add a business behind it. So we'll go maybe 38 meters. And the nice thing about this distance is that I can run this directly into our new harbor and control H this into place. Much better. You know, and I was initially thinking it might be kind of fun to have some sort of variation to our path here. Bump this out so we could have some street performers or things of that nature in this area. I'm not 100% sure that I'm sold on it. So why don't you guys let me know in the comments? Do you like the idea of this or would you prefer that it is consistent all the way through here? I'm not sure. Let me know. And then we will need to make this a proper pedestrian district. Otherwise, nothing will work here. So I will create a new pedestrian district just in this little area right here. And then we'll need to add our pedestrian spawn point. And I think we're just going to extend this road down a little bit. And then I can add that right here. And we'll just modify this roadway network to fit. And I think for around this area, we are going to go with our leisure specialization, make this kind of a happen in place, place that students would want to come on the weekend. And then I want to control our zoning a bit. We've got zoning on this road, for instance. That's not where we want it to be. And there we go. I like this configuration quite a lot. So what I've tried to do is add a couple of places where maybe you could go and check out the water, some places to have a picnic. I added these gazebos thinking that these are the sorts of places where maybe you'd have a little impromptu concert. Obviously not the exact kind of gazebo that we'd want there, but I still like it. The thought's still there. And then I'm going to move some of these trees that are in the road, but uh, I wanted to add some of these buildings that would be really attracted to students outside of school hours so we've got everything from gyms here to bars and it just in general it feels like it would be a very active place because there are literally only gyms here <laughs> we'll have to get that fixed in the future so really really like that suggestion let's go ahead and try to make a self storage and i think we're going to do that somewhere over here maybe even near this location And we've actually got this little carport. This is from the European Suburbia's content creator pack. And I think it might actually work out okay to look like a self storage. There we go. Kind of line these up to make it feel like you just drive through here. There's a little bit of graphical corruption in this. And the way that we'll resolve that is I'm just going to tap down some of these. And yeah, that, that seems to do the trick. Basically every other, I'll make it a slightly different height. And then the very last thing I want to do is add a fence around here because I feel like that's pretty common. And I just searched for this chain link fence. We're going into fence mode. We're going to use our line tool. I'm going to set this to be the item width, and that should allow me to create a really nice fence now. And there we go. That is pretty darn good. And I think that that looks like a self storage. So I'm pretty proud of that. So thank you so much, Ren Gray, for the suggestions. I think that they were both wonderful. And then our other suggestion comes from 70 times 7112. And this is an absolutely excellent suggestion. We just removed this faculty building over here, but we could have used Rico to create a historic building. So that is exactly what we're going to do. This will become a building that was adaptively reused into another use. And I think that use may actually be residential. We'll bring in some residential uses to our downtown and Evergreen. And now I'm just going to click on this and we'll go into our Rico settings. 
we'll add a local and now we'll just convert this it already the, the, the default option is residential high-end residential level three we're gonna make this this is downtown i think we can get away with level five and then we're gonna say that this is actually 25 units of housing maybe there's studios or something of that nature then we will save and apply changes and this building will immediately become a residential building with 25 units uh, that could live down here so that is absolutely wonderful just to, i want to make sure that that number makes sense so i'm going to look at a couple of these other buildings yeah we're seeing 25 units in these so maybe i'll take that down a notch and now we've got 15 households in there so i really like that suggestion thank you so much 70 times for the recommendation and then there's one more embarrassing fix that I need to admit that I just made. Basically, I was recording the city tour and I noticed that we had buildings that were abandoned throughout the entire region. And the reason for this is we added those Rico service blocks within the mall and some of the building spawn points were set up incorrectly. And as a result of that, police, fire and cargo could not get to them. And eventually it backed up all of those systems throughout the entire region. So every building started abandoning because no death care was being served anymore. No cargo was being dropped off. So if you're gonna use the building, uh, the Rico service blocks, just make sure that you're really careful with the spawn points because if they are in the wrong location, you can have the exact same problem I just had. So it was really these edge blocks right here. I had them facing towards this road and I needed to spin them and face them towards this road. As soon as I did that, everything came to life. The police came here repeatedly to service those blocks. Death care came and all the cargo was dropped off here first. And then it was distributed throughout the entire region. So very embarrassing issue, but one that I had to take care of. Otherwise, this build was uh, completely going to die. And you can see that we've rebounded in terms of our population and in terms of our bank balance as well as I resolve that issue. And with that, I think that we're gonna need to leave it here for today, but I have had a great time building with you and I hope that you've enjoyed your time as well. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And there's a million things that you could have been doing, but you decided to hang out with me and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.